Now we're going to take a look at the cavities of the eyeball. There are two primary cavities, anterior and posterior. Uh, the anterior cavity is also called the anterior segment or the aqueous chamber. Uh, and that basically is everything from the lens up front to the cornea. And then there's a posterior chamber or posterior cavity, also called the vitreous chamber, which is basically represented by this clear plastic space. Now in lab, uh, for the practical, this plastic piece may be in or it may be out. Regardless, this still counts as indicating the posterior cavity. Uh, this posterior cavity is filled uh, with what's called a vitreous humor. The vitreous humor is sort of a jelly-like substance uh, that basically fills up the eyeball, pushes the retina up against the back of the eyeball so it doesn't detach. But it's still clear to allow light rays to pass through it. And so this is vitreous humor, uh, rather, you know, fairly thick fluid. Uh, the anterior cavity is basically everything from the back of the lens up to the cornea, and it has two separate smaller chambers. There's an anterior chamber that is between the cornea and the iris, so between the cornea and the iris, and then there's a posterior chamber between the iris and the lens, kind of coming back to here. It's much thinner. Uh, the aqueous humor is a little bit different. While the posterior humor, when, once you've built it, that's pretty much what you've got for life. The aqueous humor in the anterior cavity is actually replenished uh, quite often. The humor is actually created in the ciliary processes and then gradually circulates through the anterior cavity, even through this upper part here where the cornea is. The fluid is gradually drained off at the limbus, and in a previous video we mentioned the limbus. Um, inside the limbus there are little tubes called canals of Schlem that drain off the aqueous humor. And the idea is that we're supposed to have a continuous supply of aqueous humor. We make it at the same rate we drain it off. What may have happened though is that sometimes the canals don't work very well and you wind up building extra pressure in the eye because of this because you're not draining off the fluid. This is basically the beginnings of glaucoma. And you may have been to an optometrist or an ophthalmologist where they've tested the pressure in your eyes. Sometimes that little puff of air, uh, other techniques have been developed lately that can actually use a pressure sensor and push it directly against your cornea and detect the pressure and other methods as well. But the idea there is they're trying to make sure the pressure in the cornea of the eye is not too heavy so that we're avoiding glaucoma.